What's up, future respiratory therapists? In this video, we're gonna work through some practice ABGs, but you only get two values. Let's dive in. All right, so as I stated, ABGs with only two values. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about here in just a second. Before we do that, do me a favor, head over to respiratorycoach.com. Check out the TMC and the CSE boot camps parked right there, waiting to aid and assist you in passing your conditioning exams on the first attempt. I would greatly appreciate that if you would check that out. Now, here's what I'm talking about. You have some blood gases here, and we're gonna interpret them. And I know what you're thinking, like, hold up. Like, how am I gonna interpret blood gases when I don't have all the values? That's what I hope you take away from this video. It's because you see, when you really understand arterial blood gases, you realize that I don't need all those values to really know what's going on. I can, I can make an assessment in most cases just by truly understanding what the pH is telling me and knowing that, okay, is there a problem or is there not a problem? And with one or one other value, I can tell you who the problem causer is, okay? Because when we're talking about arterial blood gases, you've got two things. It's either a respiratory problem or a metabolic problem. And I know what you're thinking right now, like, well, perhaps it's both. Like, like we can have mixed blood gases and you're right. And with time, you'll be able to do the same thing with that as well. But that's not what we're focusing on in this video. Just gonna keep it simple show you what I'm talking about, okay? Let's look at this first one right here. I got my marker pulled up. You got a pH of 7.25. Now that's all I need to know. I have a patient with a pH of 7.25. I know that is decreased. I know that is an acidosis, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and put up here, acidosis. What's my CO2? Oh, they didn't give it to you. Guess what? I don't need it because they tell me that the bicarb here is normal. Now if the bicarb is normal, Who's causing the problem? The CO2. So without even having the CO2, I know that that is elevated and I know that this is a respiratory acidosis. Not just a respiratory acidosis, this is an uncompensated respiratory acidosis. Well, hold on, how'd you know it was uncompensated? Because the bicarb here is normal, okay? So, so I know that that's gonna be the problem. All right, I used to love doing this exercise when I was at clinicals with the students. I would tell the outgoing RT to only give them two values from the ABG and let them have to work through it like this, okay? So I promise you, if you wanna pause this video and say, okay, I think I see what just happened. Let me do the rest of them. Then pause it here, but then come back and watch it and check yourself, see if you're right, okay? Now, when we look at this next one, we got a pH 7.54. I say, okay, that's gonna be an alkalosis and I have a normal CO2. What's my bicarb? Doesn't matter. Something is pushing this pH up. So I know that my bicarb has to be elevated because remember, bicarb pulls the pH in the same direction. CO2 pushes it to the opposite direction. So if my CO2 is normal, then why is my pH increased? Why is it elevated? Why is it alkalotic? because my bicarb is elevated, okay? Now I will say this, this doesn't mean that this is a purely a metabolic problem, okay? We're gonna interpret it as such. You have a metabolic alkalosis and it's uncompensated, but you have to be careful with this blood gas because this could be a COPD patient that is hyperventilating. So their bicarb is elevated, but they live with it elevated. And so it's the CO2 that's actually decreased that's causing the problem. But just from an interpretation standpoint, I realize that this, is, this pH is up because of that bicarb. And by definition, you would interpret that as a metabolic alkalosis, okay? You gotta dive a little deeper to see, is this a, a COPD patient who is hyperventilating? Because perhaps it is, okay? But from a pure interpretation, that's what you get using those two values, okay? And no other information. All right, let's look at this one over here. You say, okay, how are you gonna do this one, Joe? How are you gonna do this one when you don't have a pH? Because how are you gonna get that first word right there? We, here, we knew this was acidosis. We knew this was alkalosis. Now, how do we know which one it is? Well, let's just look at the values. Our CO2 is elevated. Our bicarb is normal. What does CO2, who's the problem? The problem is the respiratory system. So what is an elevated CO2 gonna do to your pH? 
it's going to make it go down. What is that called? An acidosis. So here we go again. Respiratory acidosis. Okay? And that's what we this is this the point of this exercise is to get you to not get so lost in in arrows up, arrows down. It's just realizing that anytime your pH is abnormal, you've got two problems or two potential problems. Which one is it? Is it the respiratory system? Is it the metabolic system? Okay. Now let's see if we can look at a couple more, maybe uh, a little bit more complicated. Okay. Let's see. Alrighty. So here we see that we've got two more, two more examples. And what we have here is a pH that is decreased. So we know this is going to be an acidosis. We don't have an arterial CO2. Our bicarb is elevated. So you go, okay, so the bicarb being elevated, that's what must be the problem, right? Because we've got a problem causer here, right? Well, let's hold on just a second. Because, wait a second, if bicarb went up, wouldn't that pull the pH up with it? It would. But we have a decreased pH. Therefore, we know that our CO2 is elevated, in extra significantly elevated. Because even with the bicarb increasing, it's not enough to get us back in a normal range. So here we go now. Say, okay, abnormal pH. We know this is a respiratory acidosis, but this one is partially compensated because the bicarb has also gone out of range, trying to compensate for the high elevated CO2. Okay? You see how that works, right? Now we look at this one over here, we're gonna see something similar. We've got an acidosis and we have a decreased arterial CO2. So you go, okay, so this is a respiratory acidosis. Not so fast because a decreased CO2 would push your pH up. You would have an alkalotic pH, but we have an acidotic pH. So we know that what is causing this problem? It's gotta be a decreased bicarb. The bicarb is down, it is pulling the pH down, and the CO2 is now trying to compensate for that acidotic uh, pH caused by that low bicarb. So this is a metabolic acidosis, also partially compensated, uh, indicated by the decrease in your carbon dioxide level. What does this sound like? This sounds like DKA, doesn't it? That sounds like a patient that presents to the ED in, with Kushmal's respirations. You draw that blood gas, you've got a metabolic acidosis, DKA. That's what it looks like. That's ABGs with two values. I appreciate you so much for watching. I am Respiratory Coach. Do me a favor, come follow me on all the socials. Since you're here on YouTube, hit that like button for me. Leave me a comment if you like this exercise. I can do more of them if you would like that. Or if you have another question, leave it down in the comments. I'll try to get a video out for you. Don't forget about respiratorycoach.com, TMC, CSE boot camps waiting right there for you. Remember, average is easy. Don't be it.